Hello, everyone. Welcome to the February edition of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. Over the next month, I'm going to take a deep dive into the role of human resources in fully operationalizing a best practices compliance program. Each day, I will pick up one topic with three key takeaways, which you can utilize to improve, enhance, or upgrade your compliance program. This series of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program Companies have finally come to realize that institutional justice and network. fairness are perhaps the most basic tenet of any successful workplace. If employees believe they will be treated fairly, it will engender a level of trust that can work to not simply motivate employees, but to lead to a more successful workplace and, at the end of the day, a more profitable company. This accompanies the entire life cycle of the employment relationship from hiring through separation. It works in areas as disparate as compensation and incentives, discipline, promotion, and internal reporting. On this final point, Welch and Steuben noted that a robust whistleblower reporting system speaks to a functioning and ethical corporate culture. Employees who can report issues in a fair manner without fear of retaliation are more empowered to make a company run more efficiently and more profitably. Yet an equally interesting finding was where there is robust internal reporting, employees are more likely to speak up to improve overall business processes, thereby making the company run more efficiently and, at the end of the day, run more profitably. The issue of institutional justice is most clearly seen in the area of discipline. This can be an overall application of a compliance program to all board members and senior managers. As noted in the FCPA guidance, Hallmark 6 of the 10 hallmarks of an effective compliance program, quote, a compliance program should apply from the boardroom to the supply room. No one should be beyond its reach. The DOJ and SEC will thus consider whether, when enforcing a compliance program, a company has appropriate and clear disciplinary procedures, whether those procedures are applied reliably and promptly, and whether they are commensurate with the violation, end quote. This mandate was brought forward in the FCPA corporate enforcement policy, which stated appropriate discipline of employees, including those identified by the company as responsible for the misconduct, either through direct participation or failure and oversight, as well as those with supervisory authority over the area in which the criminal conduct occurred. All of these concepts were continued in the 2019 guidance, which stated, Another hallmark and effective implementation of a compliance program is the establishment of incentives for compliance and disincentives for noncompliance. Prosecutors should assess whether companies have clearly have clear disciplinary procedures in place, enforce them consistently across the organization, and ensure that procedures are commensurate with violations. The 2019 guidance also laid out the following mandates. HR process, who participates in the disciplinary decisions, including the type of misconduct at issue. Is the same process followed for each instance of misconduct? And if not, why not? Are the actual reasons for the discipline communicated to the employee? If not, why not? Are there legal and investigative related reasons for restricting information or have pretextual reasons been provided to protect the company from whistleblowing or outside scrutiny? One of the areas in which HR can operationalize your compliance program is to ensure that compliance is handed out appropriately and consistently across an organization and to reward those employees who integrate such ethical and behavior and compliant behavior into their individual work practices. In addition to providing a financial incentive for ethical behavior, it also provides a sense of institutional justice. Institutional justice comes from procedural fairness and is one area that will bring credibility to your compliance program. Today, that institutional justice is called the fair process doctrine, which recognizes there are fair process, not arbitrary ones, involving rights, particularly employment rights. Considerable research has shown that people are more willing to accept negative, unfavorable, and non-preferred outcomes when they are arrived at by processes and procedures that are perceived as fair. As you incorporate the fair process doctrine into your compliance program, there are three key areas to focus on. Number one, administration of discipline. One area where the fair process doctrine is paramount is in the administration of discipline after any compliance-related incident. 
Discipline must not only be administered fairly, but it must be administered consistently across the company for the violation of the compliance policy. Failure to administer discipline uniformly will destroy any vestige of credibility you may have developed. Likewise, there must be real consequences for an employee who violates your compliance program. If a regulators come knocking and you have not disciplined employees for code of conduct or compliance violations in multiple years, the DOJ and SEC will conclude quickly that you are not serious about compliance. Fair process means that you must discipline those who engage in compliance violations no matter what their position within the organization. Employee two, employee promotions. In addition to the area of discipline, which may be administered after the completion of the compliance investigation, you must also place compliance firmly as a part of ongoing employee evaluations and promotions. If your company is seen to advance and only reward employees who achieve their numbers by whatever means necessary, other employees may certainly take note and will be understood what management evaluates and (coughs) rewards employees upon. Internal investigations. The third area of the fair process doctrine is around internal investigations. If your employees do not believe an investigation is fair and impartial, then it is not fair and impartial. Further, those involved must have confidence that any internal investigation is treated seriously and objectively. One of the key reasons employees go to an outside hotline is because they do not believe their investigative process will be fair, which is another finding of the Welch-Steuben study. An often overlooked role of a CO or compliance officer is to help employees with institutional justice. If your compliance function is seen to be fair in the w- seen to be fair in the way it treats employees in the areas as varied as financial incentives, promotions to appropriate discipline, they will likely inform the compliance program when something goes astray. What are the day's three key takeaways? Number one, the Department of Justice has long called for an appropriate and consistent application of incentives and discipline. Number two, the fair process doctrine will help set institutional justice as the norm in your organization and give employees confidence they will be treated fairly throughout the life cycle of the employment relationship. And finally, number three, inconsistent application of discipline will destroy your compliance program credibility. The bottom line is, if you terminate employees in Brazil for cheating on their expense account and the top producer in the United States cheats on his or her expense account, you have to terminate them as well. If you do not, you will destroy the credibility of your compliance program going forward, and it will be very difficult to overcome in the future. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the role of HR in a best practices and fully operationalized compliance program on the February edition of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. Thanks so much for listening. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.